Okay, so today I'm going to present an improved fault diagnosis method for KLC based manufacturing processes with validation through a cyber physical system. The author of this research is Guan Chun Huang, Hong Jing Ku, Chui Huang Chen from the Department of Industrial and System Engineering from Chongyuan Christian University in Taiwan, and myself, Wei Nong Huang, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering, Ecole de Technologie Supérieure, and Quebec Canada. So, first of all, we'll have to talk about the problem solution of PLC based history given systems, and finally, the application of the cyber physical system and the creation of a virtual system with the platform automatic automation studio from Fatman Technologies. So for our research background, PLCs have been around for a long time and they are used because of their low cost and robustness. However, they face significant challenges in the fault diagnosis system, modern manufacturing system, and, and modern production line. And so there's NERS, which is a cyber physical system which integrates the physical and virtual worlds, which lays the foundation of Industry 4.0, is reduced in real-time manufacturing. And so in our research, we're combining uh, the physical which are the PLCs in the virtual world, which is the virtual system I'm going to present later on. So for our research question, uh, we ask ourselves how to stimulate and close the fault in PLC controllers using virtual, virtual system with structured text, syntax, and automation studio. So for our process, uh, we first have to identify the problem, so analyze the impact of PLC controllers' fault on the production line, and then we construct a virtual system uh, with Automation Studio to simulate different false scenarios, including a configurer, a wind checker, and two sensors. And finally, we implement a fault handling strategy, which is the IFB and TP, which introduced analog signals that wasn't available uh, before. So for our research methodology, we first have to represent the FB and TP, which uses PLC data logging to track and analyze fault signals during operations by entering normal operations and fault signs. So it allows early detection of potential issues and it also uh, helps operators to find the fault. Um, so this is the model for the FB and TP. So the GST, which is the, uh, the disregulated system variable transition, uh, also contains a bunch of variables um, right here. So all of these are part of the function to figure out what the disregulated is. And so we have for the DSPTM, we have to keep in mind that all the signals in there are Boolean functions, which means we only have a value of 1 and 0. And uh, how the transi uh, signal transition goes from 0 to 1, then that means they're on, there's an on event. And if it goes from 1 to 0, then it means there's an off event. And if there are no changes, then there's no events. Now, if the improve FB and TP, we now have analog readings which were available uh, in the previous model. Um, and for the virtual system that we constructed with Automation Studio, we have four virtual sensors, the AWS, CDA, S1, S2, as you can see right there. And Automation Studio also allows us to animate and simulate the virtual system that we built with basic 2D animations. There's going to be a little video later on. And finally, uh, we also have indicator slides all the red dots here, uh, we have switches and selectors, which allows us to different, stimulate different scenarios. Uh, and finally, there's a structure text, which is the programmable language uh, used uh, in the, uh, the virtual system, which allows us to, to implement control strategies and interactions. So this is the flowchart for the virtual system. I'm, not, I'm just going to skip this through because we'll have an animation later. Now, this is an important graph. This is the signal time graph of the configure system. So I wanted to pull your attention at the bottom here. So we have the X1, X2, 2, X7, which are the status vector, uh, which um, describe each state of each indicator. So we have, uh, at the beginning, all the indi indicators show the value of zero. And when the package is dropped on the configure, the AWS, which is the automatic weight checker, uh, that is displays at 100 because the box is uh, weighs 100 kilograms. So, and then we have the move, moving on in X3 when the box is on the conveyor, uh, the detector, CDA, which uh, shows a value of 1 since there is a package on the conveyor. So, uh, in the earlier model, the FB and DB, there were only on and off values. Uh, but now with the 
analog reading in the improved version, we have we now have a hundred and a hundred. Uh, 150 and 100, which are analog readings. Now, this is the uh, DSPTF state transfer uh, diagram. So, this is the normal order of uh, how the computer, the virtual system works. As you can see, we uh, normally at X1, the value should be 0, 0 in, for all four sensors. And for example, at X3, we have a CDA which should display a value of 1. And the arrows indicate the or the normal order of uh, the transition. Now, for the fault detection, uh, we have we have the first one fault, the type one detection fault. As you can see here, uh, the the it's a timing error. So the T five, which is the state transition between X three and X five, displays that um, the S one sensor stays longer uh, stays at a value of on longer than a normal. So if we go back to this graph here, we see that uh, normal, normally X, uh, the S1 sensor activates at X4 and ends at X3. While in this case here where we have a fault, um, the, the X1 sensor sees, uh, stays active for longer. So the fault type is the exception time of specific transition should fall within a normal range of elapsed time. If not, the exception should be classified as type 1 fault. And the detection method is by setting a threshold for the TTO, the transition time overhead. So if the system takes longer than expected to yield to perform a transition, then we can assume that there's a fault. Now for the type 2 detection fault, uh, it's the order problem. So for example, for instance, the correct process for our uh, virtual system is X2 to X3, X4, X3, X5. But if we uh, if we detect that the virtual system does X2 to X3 and then to X5, then we also know there's an error. So as you can see, the detection method is by comparing the, the DSBTS state transit program to the uh, behavior of the current system, which deviates from the expected model. So if we see that it deviates from the DSBT model, then we can initiate a system warning mechanism to help uh, for the good functioning of the production line. Now this is the detection error flowchart. So as you can see here, uh, we first start the simulation with in the in the automation studio, and then we activate the conveyor, and then the IMTB operates, and then both at the same time the fault one detection, the type two and type type one and type two fault detection are activated both at the same time. If there are no if there's no fault detected, then the virtual system just continues to operate normally, and if there's a fault detected, then we classify it as either a type 1 fault or a type 2 fault, and there are fault alerts uh, with the signal list that I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, those are additional functional components of the virtual system. First of all, we have the emergency stop button, which allows us to stop all the uh, operations and to uh, see uh, and handle sudden, sudden incidents. And we also have error indicator lights, which um, allows us to know the exact error. As you can see here, we have we can know which one of the sensor is uh, faulty. Now, for experimental results uh, with our virtual system, we can see that the IVMTP performance uh, works because now we instead of only having Boolean signals, we also have analog readings, which is a huge plus in the, the manufacturing sector. Uh, we, have, we can also simulate with virtual system, with automation studio, which can almost replicates everything and all the conditions of a real production line. And finally, we can integrate multiple technologies with the virtual system because uh, we, have, we can add sensors and analog, analog, analog sensors to a uh, production line to simulate exactly what, uh, how a system would operate in real life. So I have a video here. Let's see. Works. So first of all, you can see that we activate uh, the conveyor with the switches here, and then with the green button, we drop a box. So no sensors uh, is the, all the sensor works normally. So there's no red light. Now um, if we wait a little bit. Uh, yeah. So the, right now we selected a 150 milligrams. So you can see that uh, at the bottom left, these sensors are activated. So now we have the S1 sensor, which we 
we triggered a failure. So as you can see, it detects it since the value of the S1 uh, doesn't change when the box goes through it. Now the S2 is activated, so if you look at the bottom here, the number for S2 won't go to 1 because uh, we assume that the, the S2 sensor doesn't work anymore. So this might seem simple, but in conclusion, uh, with the improvement of the IBM TV tool, we can now simulate uh, more uh, we, we've had a lot of ratings, we can, have, we can detect more faults, for example, wrong package, if it's a 100 kilogram package or 150 kilogram package, application of virtual system, and finally the implementation of fault indication. Thank you all for listening to me. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Establish uh, how the system should normally work, and we detect an abnormal, abnorm abnormability, and that means there's a fault. Okay, so the formula is generated by deep learning? Or? Yeah, deep machine learning. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome.